Where are we today, Mr. Van Fox? We are in Griner Middle School, the Arts Academy, to present a winning brochure from this school would place second in the state. Yep. Tom Whitelock, he's the secretary of our chapter. Okay. Okay. This is Jerry Pinkerton. He does our genealogy work, talking about our relatives, which we'll hear more about. Robert Kittrell is a member, is a member of ours, and Maradis, he has been a member of our chapter for over 50 years. We have Marshall Scanlon here, who is the committee that was in charge of the brochures we're going to talk about this morning. And right over there is Mark Harrison, he's our vice president in charge of programs. So with that, let's start our history lesson. As he said, please be seated. I'm Tom Whitelock, and I probably have the most medals on my shoulders because I'm the oldest of all these men. Uh, I'm 240 years old. Does it look like it? Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Good medication in life, you know. I'm handing out, or having handed out, the history of the Bedford flag, which was the first flag of the Revolutionary Era. It was carried by Nathaniel Page, who was considered, uh, yeah, go ahead, if you're that weak, go ahead, sit down. Um, it was carried by Nathaniel Page and his family. And he was called a cornet. And the cornet was a step below a lieutenant in the army, in the cavalry. And because this flag is so small in comparison to the other flags, that's why we know it as a cavalry flag, because as they would charge and ride, they wanted the least wind resistance on the flag. And therefore, that's why it's oh, about two feet each way. This is a very unique flag. It is the oldest complete flag in the United States for the era of the 1700s. The Damaris that I had this put on, and the painting, and the drawing, and the stitching, and all the work on it to duplicate it, to match the one that is in Bedford, Massachusetts, was done by my family, individuals in the family. My sister did the drawing, my mother did the sewing, I gathered all the materials, and my father just said, good job. Sounds logical. I carry this one because I have a pride in where it was established in the 1700s. It has a unique history. 
that history is on those pages that I handed out or had handed out for you. And you can read that at a later time and gather all the information. But there's one unique thing about this flag. It is two-sided. On one side, we have the sear, uh, the saber in front of the ribbon. And on the other side, it's behind the ribbon. The saying on there is, uh, what, what do you see here is a saying? You see it? Find it? We have this one is Vince Hunt Morthy. Conquer or die. And that was the same. This flag held by the uh, Page family was the one that was taken to the conflict and the skirmish at Concord Bridge. And returned back to the Page family's farm and hidden in the attic for over 40 years. And the reason being is they did not want the British to know that they were traitors, that they were against the British Empire. And so it was hidden. One thing that I have on here that is not on the original any longer is the fringe. And the reason that it's there is to show what the daughter of Nathaniel Page did when she wanted some decoration for a dress for a prom. She ripped off the fringe of the flag. Later on in life, she regretted it very much because this became a unique part of history. You'll read the story there, and we're glad to have this one as the first flag uh, in our country's skirmish with the British during the American Revolution. Thank you. Two things I should uh, tell all of the good people this morning. First of all, you're on film. I don't know whether you noticed that. Or not. It's Joseph Sloniger. He is our chapter historian. He collaborated, collects all the data, information about what we do in activities like today. He memorializes them in film, and we, we actually do a scrapbook. Any of you do scrapbooks? Well, we do a scrapbook for the chapter throughout the year so we can see everything that we've done, and we submit that to the state, and they judge it. And this year, I'm happy to tell you that our chapter was number one blue ribbon scrapbook because of all the things we did. So we're very happy about that. Save your applause. Or <laughs> give you a chance later. I'm here to tell you that this is the Brandywine battle flag from the Battle of Brandywine just south of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. 1777, the British had left New York and they sailed on ships and came up the Chesapeake Bay and they wanted to attack and take the city of Philadelphia because that's where the seat of liberty was. That's where the Liberty Bell is. That's where the Congress was meeting. So they wanted to take the city. George Washington gathered his troops between Philadelphia and the top of the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland, and he was going to stop them. And he was in a place called Chad's Ford. It's a little creek. And at that creek, on the high ground, stood 11,000 American soldiers, and they were being confronted by 18,000 British troops. Now, there's good news and bad news. This was the first largest battle of the Revolution. There had been other battles, but not with these many combatants going against each other. This flag was designed so it could be recognized as it stood on the hill in Brandywine. It later got carried at the Battle of Paoli a few days later, and then the Battle of Germantown, and then the Battle of Monmouth about a year later. So this flag went a lot of places. And you can see that it kind of looks like a mini American flag just with the stripes and the stars, but it's in all red. My fourth great-grandfather, Jacob 
Anne Fawson, who was born in 1756 and right outside of Philadelphia, fought at Brandywine, at Paoli, at Germantown, and Monmouth. And he was only 21 years old when he did it. I am Gary Pinkerton. I'm the registrar of the Dallas chapter, and I'm the one that works hard to get people in. This guy had, it took me two years, I think, but he had too many uh, ancestors that questioned him. Anyway, I have probably the most recognizable flag. It's called, it's, you probably all heard of it. This is the Betsy Ross flag. I, she was a seamstress in Philadelphia, and the one of the things attributed to Betsy was the, there had been other flags around with different iterations of stars and stripes, but she's the one that yeah the Washington flag. I want to talk about this too. Before she invented the five star, because because the five star the five pointed star flag could. For a seamstress, could be the cloth could be folded, and she could cut it out with just a couple of snips. The six star flag was very difficult to do, so she would, is uh, recognized as the inventor of the five stars. And you can see this is this is basically the flag we have today: the thirteen stripes, alternating red and white, and the number of stars. And the number of stars have gone up from the original 13, the next one was 15, they admitted two more, every time they had a state, they had a star. So this was what, uh, she is attributed, uh, the design of this flag is attributed to her. Uh, one uh, point of personal privilege, I have three ancestors that supported the American Revolution. My first ancestor was a woman, who, she wasn't a soldier, she provided food and fodder to the animals. If you've ever heard the phrase, not worth the continental, that's what she got in payment. It was a voucher that was to be redeemed later and they weren't worth it. But the other thing I want to mention is that my two soldier ancestors were in the third North Carolina line and they fought under the brandy wine. I get both. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> okay, I'm Bob Kittrell with the Dallas chapter and these guys. Uh, the, uh, the flag I hold is the George Washington Commander-in-Chief flag. Wherever he was, it, even in Valley Forge, during that terrible winter, where some of the soldiers were barefooted. Can you imagine being barefooted in sub-zero weather with all that snow and ice? And this is the flag that uh, flew where he was stationed. So it has, like Jared said, uh, it has one more point. Each star has six points. And of course, there were 13 colonies at the time. And each, uh, each star represented a colony that later became a state. So that is basically the, the story of this one. It's a short one. I, and uh, I have, of course, some ancestors that followed the revolution. I have a Matthew Talbot II. And uh, he had two sons that, went, that fought in the re revolution. The revolution. I have, that's just on my mother's side, <laughs> on my dad's side, that we, and that was, the war was fought in Virginia as well as other uh, states of the Union. So it's amazing how many, once you start uh, looking at the backgrounds, my mother was a genealogist, so I had to step up beyond these guys. I, she, traced lines and was going to write a book and never got around to it and all these ancestors uh, the uh, 37 uh, 
names that she spent 40 years in tracking. And some were good, some turned out to be, you know, no relative at all. Others were uh, uh, right on the dime. They were related to the Talbots on her side or the Kettrells on my side. But it's amazing because uh, it, uh, it shows that uh, somebody, this is before the days of the internet, we can pull up all kinds of sites where families can do research. But she did all this by typing, by calling, making calls, uh, typing letters. And so there may be a few ancestors in your background. By the way, it's not just the white guy, it was the Spanish and the Indian. We had many of those people that fought for the revolution. It's amazing how many blacks fought on the side of the revolution. So it's a uh, fantastic. I mean, okay, I'm going to turn it over. Okay. Thank you, Robert. Okay. For those of you who might be wondering just exactly what our organization is, we're called the Sons of the American Revolution, which is, means we have relatives going back to the revolution. This morning I have with me one of our members. He's a retired two-star general. United States Army, and Marshal Scanlon wants to talk to you a little bit about what the SAR really is. Okay. Hi. My chief notes. Okay, got a question for you. How many of you know somebody, your aunt, uncle, brother, sister, mom, dad, whoever has has fought in a war someplace? Get your hands up. Okay? If you were to ask my wife, does she know anybody who has fought in a war, she'd say, well, yeah, dummy, if I'd ask her that. She would say, our son in Iraqi freedom, me in Desert Shield, Desert Storm, her dad in World War II, and for the teachers, because y'all don't, don't know this, the teachers, my father-in-law was a Japanese POW for four years survivor of the Bataan Death March. So that's kind of the lineage of our family, going back with the different, oh, and my, and my wife's great-grandfather uh, was in the Spanish-American War and World War I. So that's kind of the lineage of our family. Well, the SAR, the Sons of the American Revolution, is family. And for myself, all my, my kin folks, if, you, if I can use that, that fought in the American Revolution, it's on my mom's side. And it goes all the way back, and we have to, we have to check the lineage to make sure everybody connects, and, and I'm not just saying, yeah, I had two people that fought in the American Revolution, I have to prove it, that it happened and everything. And my kin folks that fought in the American Revolution or were involved in the American Revolution was a dad named John Waldo and his son named John Waldo II, John Waldo Jr. And again, that was on, on mom's side. Uh, you know, the, the American Revolution was over with about 1783 and it was a long war that was fought. And you know that General George Washington was the commander of the forces. The Sons of the American Revolution was formally organized and founded in uh, April the 30th of 1889. And it's interesting too that I found out that J April 30, 1889 was the hundredth anniversary of President George Washington's inauguration. So it had some significance when it was founded on that date and everything. Also, in the uh, Sons of the American Revolution over the years, we're about 130 years old now or something, we've had 17 presidents of the United States that have been members of SAR. And the most recent that you remember is President George Bush the Younger is a member of SAR. And 
I guess the last thing I would tell you, because you know, again, you got to really look at your ancestry and your heritage and everything. But there is a uh, organization called CAR, which is Children of the American Revolution, that was founded back in 1895. So there you are. You can join if you can prove your heritage and everything. But this this it, it's a neat group, and especially to hear about you know some of the people that fought for our country uh, back years ago. And that's why we're free today, and that's kind of the precepts that we uh, have in the SAR to carry on the heritage. And what you folks have done with this brochure contest, just to kind of get involved in it, and a little history and all that other good stuff. So thank you for your participation, and it's an honor to be here. Thank you, Marshall. Um, Marshall, again, was the chairman of the committee that did the judging on the brochures, which is the reason why we're here this morning. So without further ado, Joanna, if I can have that file, I'd like Mark Harrison to join me, and also Marshall, if you'll join me. I'm happy to tell you that we do this contest annually. And we have a number of other contests, which I'm going to leave some brochures with Joanna so that you can find out the other activities you can be involved with to promote the revolution and the American history and our American heritage, and also maybe to uh, win some awards. So without per, uh, personal news, who have you got there first? We have Eduardo Castillo. Where is Eduardo Castillo? <laughs> Congratulations. Don't go away. Yeah. First, of all, first of all, you get your brochure back, okay? You need a check for 25 bucks. Yeah. Well, that's fine. That, that belongs to me. Yeah. <laughs> Here, take it. And then we have a, a certificate for you. So, so congratulations. Turn around, so they can see. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Who's next? Next we have Fernando Castro. Okay. Uh, present you a certificate of merit. More you get your brochure back, and you get twenty-five bucks. Thanks. Thank you, my son. Who's next? Uh, Benny. Benny, is it Cornejo? You get your picture, <laughs> but you got to get your picture, buddy. And you get a twenty-five dollar check. So congratulations. You got a smile. <laughs> Good job. And Javier. Javier Perez. You may have to. <laughs> we'll come to you. If you don't mind, thank nope. you. Congratulations, you back Javier. To there. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, uh, we have a ticket for you. Now, I may not be able to get up. Yeah. And you put and you it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Congratulations. Good job on it. I can get up for now. <laughs> now, all of those four good students helped us achieve an honorable mention at our state convention two, two weeks ago. But I'm terribly proud also to tell you that you have a yeah. big, you have a bigger one. I'm going to mess up the name. Aurelia? Aurelius? Aurelius. 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 Is that right? Get up. You're going to be real happy. Yeah. Congratulations. You were the second place winner in the state. So congratulations. Yeah. You have a ribbon. And you have oh, a check in I there. Look? Yeah, just <laughs> <laughs> you have yeah. a check in there for two hundred dollars. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so 
the dog. Oh. You know, right. Congratulations. You can stay with me. Oh. Oh. Now, for the five that participated, was it worth your effort? Would you do it again? Guess what? You get to do it again next year. <laughs> and again, we're going to be leaving some information around here about the contest that we have, and it's not just brochures. We also have posters. We also have oration contests. We have essay contests. And all of you, as you continue through your schooling, can go all the way up to the 12th grade with the possibility of doing the same thing. I will tell you that we have a member of our, or sponsored by our chapter, a gentleman who was an Eagle Scout from here in Dallas, who won first place in the Eagle Scout contest for the state, and he got $2,800 in scholarship money, and he's headed to college this year. And it came through our chapter. Nice. Uh, another Wonderful. nice advantage for our chapter was the American history teacher entry won first place in the state. And she is going to go to Valley Forge for four days of training and enjoying the history, that background and so forth there that she can bring back to her class at her school and uh, expound upon it and plus a nice little cash prize too. Now I'm up here to ask you one question, real quick. Do you think it was worth it to sit here and listen to all these old men? <laughs> you do? Well, I've got some cash for you if you did. However, this is colonial cash. Back in the colony days, each colony had its own scripted money. Now you can try, if you want, to spend this. Thank you. You two might try at Neiman Marcus. The rest of you might try at uh, Wendy's. But uh, I'm sure they'll kick you out because it's not exactly what you have. We can, but we've got a couple other things we have to do. And then we'll I'm sorry. Well, no. I'm sorry. Well, don't, don't be sorry. No, no, no. Don't be sorry. And actually, yeah. actually, we'd like you, you to come, come up here. here okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, for your assistance in putting, helping us put this together, we would like to uh, present you a certificate of appreciation for your. So. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Did you say the principal is here? I am. This is uh, Ms. Rojas. Ms. Rojas. Ms. Rojas, would you join us up here also? Yeah, I would love to hear Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. We would like to present you a flag certificate awesome. for the school for your participation and for your efforts to educate our, the children of our community and, and your support of, of the patriotism and the American, American flag. I'm very proud to. Thank you. Very cool. Thank you. 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 Thank very smart of you. Thank you. Abraham, my darling, I'm going to need you to step out just a little bit. And Eduardo and um, Aurelis, Benny, and Fernando, would y'all go stand around uh, Javier? And you gentlemen will also go stand around Javier. Thank you. Yeah, it's a big group. Y'all got to squeeze. Okay. Well, Twenty-five, the four in individual here. Yeah, go ahead, Arrel. She can sit down. I think that'd be awesome. Yeah. There you go. And the other three. There's two of them here. One over there. You sit down there.
Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Gather <laughs> in as close as you can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was trying to move the papers. Yeah. Y'all push all the papers towards the far side. Oh yeah. Really, really, really fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Sir, um, uh, you can go step forward just a hair. Okay. Okay. And, um, yep. I think I look at all these smiling faces. Everybody's saying, <laughs> S-A-R! S-A-R! <laughs>